Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and I'm going to be taking you through this study skill session. Before starting, make sure you've got a pen and paper or you have the worksheet open on your device so that you can do the activities in the session. This study skill session is going to look at how to design a research question. Research questions are important for every subject, so the session will be useful for everyone. There will be a STEM focus on the examples, so the session may be more useful for those of you who are more interested in STEM subjects. The session is aimed for students between the ages of 8 and 12, but it most likely will be useful for older students too. The session aims are to know what rules are needed to create a good research question, to analyse badly written research questions, identifying why they are less effective. Understanding why a research question doesn't work will help you know how to improve the question. And finally, to design a strong research question. Before we begin looking at research questions, it's important to understand what research actually is. It's the collecting of information to answer a question, or the process of finding something out. For example, in scientific research, it's the process you would take to find out what happens to our heart after doing exercise, to find out why we forget things we've learnt, or find out why some people snore. To find out why people snore, you could write a survey asking lots of people, some who snore and some who don't, questions about their lifestyle. For example, you could ask how much they eat, how much exercise they do, and questions about their body, whether they take medication or their weight. You could then compare the snorers' answers to the non-snorers and see if there's something about their lifestyle or their bodies that's different to understand why some people snore. That process is research. So why is research important? All knowledge comes from research. All the information you learn about in your textbooks and from your teachers has been worked out from people who have asked big questions, who have then looked at all the information they've gathered and worked out what is true. When you learn about the digestive system, you're learning knowledge that's come from research. Scientists ask questions about how our body works. They did research on the body and found out how everything works. Again, what you know about habitats is all discovered by people who did research. Designing research questions and doing research is a very important skill at university. Whatever you study, you will be required to do research. So this session will give you a really good start to understand how to do something that you'll have to do at university. There are five guidelines to consider when designing a research question. Number one, make sure it's on a topic that you're interested in. Number two, make sure it's a question that requires a complex answer. In other words, one that you can't answer with yes or no. For example, is it cold in the desert at night can be answered with yes, it is, or no, it isn't. Example two, how does climate change affect deserts can't be answered with a yes or no, so that's an example of a complex answer. Number three, you want a question that requires an answer not based on an opinion. We'll be coming back to this one to discuss it more and look at lots of examples. Number four, you want a question that is testable. In other words, a question that you can answer by collecting information. We call that information data. For example, the question, is it cold in the desert at night, is testable because it's possible to sleep in a desert at night or go there at night to test whether it's cold. The question, why do human beings exist, is not testable because it isn't possible to find an answer by doing a test or experiment. 
Number five, you want a question that is specific, a question that focuses on a narrow topic. Again, we'll be looking later at lots of examples on how to make questions narrow and specific. Let's go back to the third guideline. Create a question that does not ask for opinions as answers. What does this mean here? Questions that include adjectives where the meaning can be debated often require an opinion, so try to avoid them. The answer to a good research question must be based only on evidence, not what people think. Some examples of adjectives not to include are good, better, worse, interesting and important. Let's look at some examples of questions with these adjectives in them. Are national parks in Wales better than national parks in England? Is it important to read? Are theme parks exciting? Even if research has been done to answer these questions, finding something better, important or exciting is still an opinion. So avoid these adjectives and these types of adjectives in your question. Also, the word should asks for an opinion as an answer. This is a judgment whether you should or shouldn't do something. So avoid that word in your question. Why or whether you should do something is a point of view or an opinion. It might be supported by evidence, but ultimately it is an opinion if you are saying you should or shouldn't do something. Have a go now at working out if the following questions require an opinion in the answer. You'll have about 20 seconds to work it out for each question, then the answer will come up. Is chocolate tastier than crisps? Yes, the answer would be an opinion. Why are birds so colourful? No, the answer would not be an opinion. What happens when we boil water? No, the answer would not be an opinion. Should we water plants? Yes, the answer would be an opinion. What is the best way to make cupcakes? Yes, the answer would be an opinion. What happens in our stomachs when we eat? No, the answer would not be an opinion. Let's quickly recap the five guidelines for designing a research question. Make sure it's something that you find interesting. Make sure it's a question that requires a complex answer. You want a question that has an answer not based on opinion, a question that's testable and something specific. Let's have a look at a flowchart that will help us design a good research question. The first thing I'm going to ask myself is, what do I want to discover? I'm interested in the sea and want to know if it is blue. So I'm writing a research question, is the sea really blue? I'm then going to ask, does my question require more than a yes, no answer? It does not because someone could say, yes, it is really blue, or no, 
It isn't blue. So I'm going to rewrite my question. Why is the sea blue? For this answer, you can't say yes or no. Now I'm going to ask, does my question ask an opinion? No, there's no opinion that that question is asking for. I'm now going to ask, is my question testable? Yes, it is. I am able to test my question by testing out how light makes different colours. It's possible to do an experiment to understand why and how different colours are seen. So I don't need to change anything for the moment. Next, I'm going to ask, can my question be more specific? Your answer to this will always be yes. It's good to ask this question to really force you to work out how to make your question more specific, more focused. I'm going to write, what causes the sea to be blue? Turning a why question into a what or how is a way to make your question more specific. Can you see that the question seems a bit easier to answer now? I'm going to ask myself again, can I be even more specific? I'm going to look at each word of my question to see if I can narrow each word down. There are many C's, so I'll narrow down to one C, and there are many shades of blue, so I'll narrow down to one shade. Now my question is, what causes the Caribbean Sea to be turquoise? By using the flowchart to ask sorts of questions and follow the guidelines, my research question has changed from, is the sea really blue? To a better research question, what causes the Caribbean Sea to be turquoise? This question here is, requires a more complex answer. It is much more narrow and focused and is one that is more easily testable. Have a go yourself now at using the flowchart to improve another research question. Why should I get at least eight hours sleep? I've put the questions into the flowchart to help you. See if you can answer them and change the research question when you need to. You can type in the flowchart in the worksheet attached, or you can create your own on a sheet of paper. Pause the video now to complete the flowchart and come up with a better research question, then continue this presentation. Here is an example of how you could have improved the question. So, does the question require more than a yes or no answer? Yes. So we don't need to change the question yet. Does my question ask for an opinion in the answer? Yes, when responding to whether or why you should do something, you're giving an opinion. I'm going to change it to what happens when we have less than eight hours of sleep. I'm sure this is different to the question you came up with. Check though that your question doesn't have a why or a should in it. Is my question testable? Yes, it's possible to do experiments on people to see what happens when they have less than eight hours of sleep. Can my question be more specific? Yes, when thinking about how to test the question, what exactly do I want to be looking at? I'm going to add what happens to our bodies when we have less than eight hours of sleep. Can my question be even more specific? Yes, I still don't know exactly who or what type of person I'll be testing the question on. I'm changing it to what effect does eight hours of sleep have on teenagers' bodies? As I mentioned, your question may be very different to mine, it may still be a strong research question if you know exactly what it is that you're testing, if it's as narrow as possible, and it's one that you can definitely test. Let's now have a look at a number of research questions. Why are they not strong research questions? On the left, there are four explanations. The question doesn't require a complex answer. It asks for an opinion. 
it's not testable, so it's not possible to find an answer through collecting data, and it's vague, in other words, not specific. Match up the question to A, B, C or D. You can type the responses on the worksheet or write it down, writing the number followed by the appropriate letter. For example, 1, D. What are the consequences of global warming? That one is not very specific. Pause the video and play it again when finished. Let's have a look at the answers. These first three are not very strong because they do not require a complex answer. In other words, we can answer all of them with yes or no. Does owning a pet help to overcome loneliness? Yes or no. Is smoking bad for your health? Do police affect how much crime there is? All those, you could say yes or no. The next three all ask for an opinion. We've got what is the best way to find fossil fuels. Should universities be free for students? And what is the easiest way to learn an instrument? Best and easiest are adjectives where the meaning can be debated and should asks for a judgment as well. So those in the response, it's always going to be what someone thinks is the best way, what someone thinks is the easiest, and what someone thinks, whether someone thinks universities should be free. The next two are not testable. Is the universe finite? There's no experiment we can do to find an answer. And the same goes for why does time exist? We can't do an experiment to find the answer. The final four could all be more specific. We can put them in this category by process of elimination. All four of the questions do require a complex answer. You can't say yes or no to respond. The responses to the questions will not be an opinion and you can test them all, but they can all be more specific. Pick two or three of the questions from the last activity that you found most interesting and rewrite them to make them stronger or more effective. You can use the spare flowcharts in the worksheet to help. These questions will come up again so you can have a look at them all and decide which ones to work on. That's all from me on designing research questions. Thanks for listening. And as a final challenge, can you design another research question where you can actually answer it by collecting data or doing an experiment in your home? Create your question, collect your data or do your experiment and see what happens.